Good evening, welcome to 4 Anglers, the digital platform that keeps fishing alive. And welcome to another uh, edition of On The Line With. And today we are talking technical again. We are at Escape Boating with Dean Barker. And uh, we are going to talk a few important tips for when the winter is over and you need to get your boat ready to be back on the water again. So let's go over to him. Uh, welcome on the program, Dean. Welcome to Escape Boating. Uh, today I'm going to give you three tips uh, of what to do when for a bit of post winter understanding and things like that. Uh, so today I'm going to start off with your wheel bearings on how to inspect them to make sure that you need to understand of where it, whether it needs to be changed or not. You must understand your wheel bearings is the most vital and important part of your boat especially from getting you from point A to point B. So from here I'm going to show you one or two tips and then we're going to go from there. Okay, so on the first thing we're going to start to do on the first inspection is just a physical inspection. So what we're going to do firstly is you're going to take both your hands, you're going to place one hand on the top left, one hand on the top right, your foot on the bottom, and you're going to pull with as much force, not too much, but with fair amount, to feel if your bearing does move. And by then, by doing that, you will have felt if your bearing does move, that it has a bit of a, a knock to it, if you want to call it that then you need to go on to second stage of physical inspection. So second, second stage of physical inspection would be to jack the boat up. Please guys, safety is a very critical important part here. Please make sure you've got trestles and extra protection so it doesn't fall. Okay, now as we can see, we are doing a spin to check, there's no movement left and right of the wheel and also while it is up there, you can feel if it has more shake or not. Then thirdly, in order to do inspection, to make sure, and this is one of the main steps, is to make sure that you take the grease cap off. So finally take the grease cap off, so that off. From there, you will be able to see your nut on the inside with your split pin. You will see that you have your bearing face on the inside. From there, you'll be able to see a physical inspection of if your grease has changed color from heat and if you have water or dirt inside your uh, grease cap or in your bearings. If from there you do have that, it is recommended to take it to your dealer or if you do it yourself, to take that and replace your bearings. As especially with it being standing, it has created pit marks and damage to the bearing itself when it comes to that. Once that is done and you have they taken it to your dealer and they have replaced it, just to make sure that they do make sure your grease cap your, your seals have been replaced, bearings have been replaced, and when they re, where they put your grease cap back on, they do seal it as with a bit of sealant or they just for additional protection of water and stuff like that. We basically reinstalled your grease cap. Slide a little tap and that grease cap is back in place. Dean, just tell me, when you're on the road, is there anything, especially if you hit the long road, is there anything that you need to do uh, while on the road, stop, feel, or I don't know what, anything that you can do to prevent any damage? Go. Okay, so the best thing, Vanna, is to, on the, when you're on the road, is if you do a travel, make sure, obviously, you check that your brakes are disengaged in the front if you have brakes on the trailer. As you are traveling, always make sure that you stop, say, every 100, 200 Ks, uh, all dependent if you stop in a garage if you stop to fill up with fuel things like that always get out into a physical touch so you take your hand and you just touch the bearing on the faces where the grease cap is it is going to be fairly hot but it mustn't be so hot that it burns you within three or four seconds sometimes you've also got to watch uh, some people can't handle the heat on their hands so it is also better sometimes to take your hand slightly further up onto the rim and feel it by the wheel nuts and then you get an indication from there Okay, so Dina, what else needs to be done? Uh, what is the second tip? 
Okay, Venom. The second tip is obviously making sure your couplers are greased, making sure they're released. If you've got handbrakes, make sure your handbrake is off. So firstly, the thing I'd recommend, check your handbrake is off, make sure you've got wheels, uh, bricks by your wheels, and then we can go from there. You have on your coupler, it is obviously moving left and right, and it has a back and forth movement with a shock inside. Okay, so what we're gonna firstly do is obviously make sure that it turns left and right. Firstly, so if it moves left and right to our lock there, we are still fine. Secondly, we have two grease nipples over here. There, so those two grease nipples is your greasing points for your shaft of where it slides back. If that is tight, it needs to be dealt with. So what we'll do is we take a grease gun. We're gonna push the grease gun on to the clip and we are going to pump it just go about three pumps three pumps make it off you will always have excess grease that is left just wipe your excess grease off which is not a bad thing and then we'll obviously go to the second grease nipple on the second grease nipple we do the same it off wipe the grease off i just take a little, little excess grease and i just take touch it onto the sliding pin of the the coupler so it also gives it a bit of lubrication method from there then from there once the coupler is done we go to the handbrake so what we have done is we still have the wheel jacked up at the back so now we make sure that the handbrake is loose and then we're going to go spin the wheel so you'll spin the wheel and make sure it turns free then on your second point is you will pull your handbrake up into its position of lock and then you will go to the wheel and try and spin it if it does not spin you know your brakes are set correctly Okay, so this is now with your handbrake off. You need to make sure that your wheel frizz spins freely, that it has that, so you don't have to worry too much about on your brakes. So as you can see, it spins really. Okay, from there, we're gonna activate the brake now. Okay, so now we have activated the brake. Now I should physically not be able to turn this wheel at all. So that tells you that your brakes are set correctly and they are working properly. Okay, once you have tasted your brakes after that, make sure you disengage your brakes correctly and spin it to make sure that your brakes do release. Otherwise, your brakes from there need to be serviced. Okay, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to check on the fuel system now. You're making sure that you don't have water in your fuel and that you don't have fuel in your areas for prolonged times. Uh, we don't have the very best fuel in South Africa, so unfortunately, it is a bit of a worry that you've got to worry about. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to go to the vapor separating drainage pipe, which is on the opposite side here. So, on this particular motor, which is a Yamaha 150, we have a little pink pipe over here, which is your drainage. From there, then at the bottom inside here, you'll see there is a little screw inside on where the pink pipe attaches inside there that is your part where the, your section where you're allowed to unscrew so you can let put any water vapor fuel that's left into your separating tank where your main fuel pumps are in order to drain out yeah. so what we're going to do some of them have stars some of them have flats some of them have ellen keys so on this one it's a star i'm going to grab a star and we're going to quickly just drain that to show you guys what it looks like when it comes out From there, it will drain out there. That any water will fall to the bottom. And as this is, you can smell this is fresh fuel. So once we have fuel there, you can relock it unless you permanently want to drain it for the course of storage. Then you will take that pipe, and from there you will reposition it back into its place, and it is known for your packing away. Okay guys, the other thing we've got to watch here is what we call flushing an engine. Motors have attachment on the side here, 
this particular Yamaha does and some of the Mercury's have an attachment which is normally based on the side here. From there you will unscrew it. There will be a little bit of water that comes out. It's not too much of a worry. So what we'll do is we'll unscrew it. As you can see there's the water. You then go there. You will then have get a Gardena attachment. You will screw the Gardena attachment into it. You will then plug your hose pipe onto it. You can then turn your water on and that water will flow through the head of the engine and via out the tail tail out the exhausts it is not uh, please do not start the engine with running on this this is for flushing to get any dirty debris dirty water things like that out of the engine and once you are done flushing and you feel that your five minutes is more than adequate for that you can then take it and you reinstall it and you make sure that it is tightened properly try not to over tighten it in case of cracking but make sure it's tightened that there are no leaks when it comes to that. If you feel you need to start your engine, rather go get yourself a set of earmuffs and then you'll take your earmuffs and you will take them from the, the ear, once you have your earmuffs, you will take them and you will attach them to the gearbox. So you will attach them to the gearbox over here. Some of the motors, for example, the high performance SHOs, Sportsmaster gearboxes, there are special muffs that have to be ordered for them. That's not the standard muff. On the older motors with the, the side pickups, you can attach the muffs onto the side pickups, turn your tap onto 100% full so you have adequate water pressure. You can start your motor, but you can only let it idle. Two, three minutes maximum. I don't recommend any more than that. Uh, we, there are different ways of doing things, but it is not worth taking the risk when it comes to that. On some of the Mercury's, they have a double intake, so you have a pickup here and a pickup here. For there, you need to be advised by a service technician on how to flush it, or be taken to the service technician to show you in order how to flush it. Thanks, Dean. So, what does these muffs look like, and uh, how do they work? Okay, Van, these muffs is literally just a wire band or a plastic band, which you can get at your normal service dealers. It is basically two cups with one that has a water intake on the one side, the other side is blanked off. You do get some that have a double water intake or equal pressure. So what we do with this is we will take it and we will slide it across the back of the gearbox, over so it covers your vents. So it covers your vents, you cannot see your vents, now that will give you adequate water pressure. Smaller motors you might, or larger motors, you might have to come from the front of the engine. Just dependent that that does not interfere with anything when it comes to that. While I'm flushing that or while I'm, I'm running the motor with the muffs on, um, can I put it in gear so that the prop spins? If your muffs are not in the way, you will be able to put it into gear. Uh, just make sure that there's no obstructions obviously if your prop is still on otherwise remove your prop please um, especially to be dead honest with you rather remove the prop especially when you're in this for safety reasons of not have injuries well thank you that was an interesting talk um, we really appreciate your time and uh, thank you for escape boating for allowing us uh, to do a nice on the line in the workshop here with you guys thanks a lot Vanna. thank you very much for allowing us to give the interview um, if there are obviously any questions guys are more than welcome to speak to us uh, we obviously do run our own workshops and stuff so please don't be scared guys it is a necessity make sure your boats are looking at the wheel bearings is number one make sure everything is right and guys if once it's done go enjoy the season that's wonderful, wonderful to have you on the guys on the water well that's it guys uh, thank you for watching on the line with us tonight and we had escape boating on technical talk and uh, we catch you again on the next one, 5.30 in the evenings, uh, and uh, remember, on 4Anglers, the digital platform that keeps fishing alive, and remember, you guys are awesome. Cheers.